SpaceX fueled up a fully stacked Starship vehicle for the first time ever on January 23. The test, known as the wet dress rehearsal, involved filling the propellant tanks of Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 with 10 million pounds or 4.6 million kilograms of propellant and practicing the countdown without actually starting the engines. The wet dress rehearsal began at around 2 p.m. local time by pumping liquid methane and oxygen into Booster 7. Fuel loading was briefly slowed when Booster 7 tanks were more than 30% full, and during that short break, propellants began to be pumped into Ship 24. The propellant loading rate on Booster 7 reverted to normal as frost began to appear on Ship 24. In about an hour and a half, both Ship 24 and Booster 7 were completely filled with liquid methane and oxygen. Around 10 minutes after the integrated vehicle was fully loaded, SpaceX activated the orbital launch mount's fire extinguisher and detonation suppression system, seemingly practicing the moments before the rocket would otherwise ignite its engines and lift off. At around 4.15 p.m. local time, the vehicle started to detank, and in about three hours, the spacecraft was fully drained and propellants were returned to the ground storage tanks. After the rocket was fully drained, SpaceX confirmed that the wet dress rehearsal was a success, and they are now moving on to the next phase of pre-launch testing. Both vehicles experienced thermal contraction during the fuel loading process due to the presence of propellants at sub-zero temperatures inside them. This is normal and expected during fuel loading. Moreover, dents were observed on the booster after detanking, which were fixed when the booster was later repressurized. Since mid-2022, Ship 24 and Booster 7 have completed several independent cryogenic proof tests, static fires, and full-stack proof tests. The wet dress rehearsal was more critical than those tests, and it is remarkable that SpaceX successfully completed the test on the first attempt without any hold or abort. The wet dress rehearsal not only tested the integrated vehicle's capacity to contain 10 million pounds of propellants without failure, but also ensured that the launch tower, launch mount, and several ground systems needed to pump all of these pressurized cryogenic fluids were working as expected. Altogether, the wet dress rehearsal marked a significant milestone for SpaceX, and finally, after years of developing its Mars rocket, the company can say it almost has a flight-ready vehicle. The next major milestones before the orbital test flight include firing the 33 booster engines in unison and obtaining a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. The upcoming 33 engine test will validate several key systems, including engine ignition and the plumbing inside the rocket that simultaneously carries the propellants to all those engines. At the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics SciTech Conference, SpaceX's Vice President of Flight Reliability, Bill Gerstenmaier, said that the 33-engine static fire test could happen next week if things go well. He added that still a lot of work must be completed before that long-anticipated test. It appears that SpaceX is preparing to construct a water deluge system for the orbital launch mount. A water deluge system prevents rocket exhaust from damaging the vehicle or its surroundings during launch. The launch pad hardware will be protected from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during liftoff by the thousands of liters of water sprayed into the area directly below the rocket's engines. In 2020, Elon Musk stated that SpaceX intentionally plans to avoid a flame diverter at Starbase. But damage to the concrete beneath the orbital launch mount during Booster 7 multi-engine static fire tests proved SpaceX's decision to forego installing the flame diverter wrong. After each test, SpaceX had to rebuild the concrete underneath the launch mount, a procedure that takes a couple of weeks to complete. Now it is extremely difficult for SpaceX to install a flame diverter underneath the launch mount because of the presence of the launch mount legs. So, instead, it looks like the company is planning to install a water deluge system. SpaceX has already begun installing a water deluge system at the base of the launch mount at Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A. And last week, the company shipped a large collection of hardware, including giant deluge manifolds, some deluge plumbing, and storage tanks from Florida to Starbase. The barge carrying the cargo is expected to arrive at Starbase in the first week of February. Some kind of foundation work is currently ongoing near the Starbase orbital launch tower, probably for installing the deluge system hardware shipped from Florida. And to store the water for the deluge system, SpaceX may use the two empty storage tanks at the tank farm which were originally meant for liquid methane storage. Or they may construct a new storage tank near the launch tower. SpaceX might begin the construction of the deluge system immediately after the arrival of the hardware from Florida, and the process would take several weeks to finish. If SpaceX has plans to complete the installation of the water deluge system before the orbital launch test, that will most likely result in the delay of the flight. Altogether, we will have to wait a few days to get a clear idea about the deluge system's construction plans.
Remember to keep an eye on the LabPadre live streams to stay up to date with what's happening at Starbase. Starship 24 was destacked from Super Heavy Booster 7 on Wednesday afternoon. The ship was returned to the build site on Thursday morning to complete final checkouts before the orbital test flight. The ship is currently stationed at the Rocket Garden to save space at the build site. Teams may soon install the remaining thermal protection system tiles on Ship 24, particularly those at the attach points on its nose cone. Starship 24's successor, Starship 25, is currently sitting at suborbital launch pad B as it prepares for a static fire test campaign. Road closures are scheduled next week for rocket tests, probably for the Ship 25 static fire test or the Booster 733 engine test. Ship 25's partner, Booster 9, which had successfully completed two partial cryogenic proof tests, was sent back to the build site on January 10 for engine installation. A Raptor engine was delivered to the launch site on Thursday afternoon, most likely to replace one of the engines on Booster 7, ahead of the 33 engine test. SpaceX installed the rocket catching and stacking arms on the orbital launch tower at Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. Soon it will conduct movement tests, starting with horizontal movements and then vertical ones. A water bag test to assess the load carrying capacity of the chopsticks will also be performed shortly. The bags filled with thousands of liters of water will simulate the weight of the Starship and Super Heavy. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Rocket Lab conducted its first rocket launch from U.S. soil on January 24. The mission, nicknamed Virginia is for launch lovers, took off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility on Tuesday evening, carrying three satellites to orbit for radio frequency analytics specialist Hawkeye 360. It was the 33rd mission of Rocket Lab's two-stage electron rocket. Despite having its headquarters in the U.S. since its inception, all of Rocket Lab's previous 32 launches have taken place from its New Zealand-based facility. More than an hour after liftoff, the Electron's upper stage released its payloads into a 550-kilometer orbit, inclined 40.5 degrees to the equator. The Hawkeye 360's satellites are designed to detect, characterize, and locate the source of terrestrial radio frequency transmissions. Such data are helpful in government intelligence gathering operations. Tuesday's mission was the sixth launch of the Hawkeye constellation. All five previous missions were launched atop SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. The Hawkeye constellation, estimated to be completed in the late 2020s, will consist of 20 clusters containing three satellites each. Rocket Lab plans to conduct 14 electron launches in 2023, after conducting nine in 2022. The company projected that four to six of those launches would take place from Wallops Flight Facility. In addition to the electron launches, Rocket Lab is building a larger reusable rocket called the Neutron. Rocket Lab announced its Neutron in 2021, and the company is currently setting up a production facility for the rocket near the launch pads at Wallops Island. The company recently released pictures showing the construction of the propellant tank and tank dome of the Neutron rocket inside its production facility. Please check out my previous videos from the links in the description to learn about the technical details of the Neutron rocket, whose first flight is expected no earlier than 2024. The James Webb Space Telescope, which was launched in December 2021 and has been conducting scientific observations since July 2022, suffered another glitch last week. The Near-Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or NERIS instrument, suffered a communication delay, causing the flight software to time out. NERIS is designed to analyze light signatures to study the atmospheres of small exoplanets, perform high-contrast imaging, find distant galaxies, and operate as a camera when the telescope's other instruments are occupied. The instrument is currently unavailable for science observations, while NASA and the Canadian Space Agency work together to determine and correct the root cause of the delay. According to NASA, there is no indication of any danger to the hardware, the observatory and other instruments are all in good health, and the affected science observations will be rescheduled. This is not the first time the space telescope has glitched in space. In August, the telescope's mid-infrared instrument showed increased friction while preparing for scientific observation. The mechanism that developed issues was a grating wheel that allowed scientists to select between short, medium, and long wavelengths when making observations. Engineers later developed a new method to use the mechanism despite the issue. In December, the observatory spent two weeks in safe mode due to a software glitch in the observatory's attitude control system, which controls the direction the spacecraft points. The observatory returned to normal operations from that issue on December 20. In addition, the $10 billion telescope experienced a micro-meteoroid impact in July last year as it was completing commissioning procedures and preparation for starting science operations. 
Engineers had to initiate a delicate readjustment of the impacted mirror segment to help cancel out a portion of the distortion caused by the micrometeoroid. All the issues that James Webb faced to date were repairable from the ground station. But since Webb is located 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth, it won't be possible to head into space and fix it if something goes significantly wrong with the telescope in the future. NASA and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, announced a collaboration to demonstrate a nuclear thermal rocket engine in space. Nuclear thermal propulsion technology works by transferring heat from a nuclear fission reactor to a liquid propellant. The liquid propellant will convert into a gas and expand through a nozzle to provide thrust to propel the spacecraft. The system offers a high thrust-to-weight ratio and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets, enabling faster and more robust deep space missions. It will also allow increased science payload capacity and higher power for instrumentation and communication. Under the recent agreement, DARPA will develop the nuclear reactor and engine for a nuclear rocket, which the agency and NASA hope to fly in an in-space demonstration as early as 2027. NASA is suspending efforts to try to fully deploy a solar array on its Lucy spacecraft, at least until late next year. Lucy, launched on 16 October 2021 atop an Atlas V rocket, is the first space mission to study Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. Shortly after the spacecraft separated from the rocket's upper stage, the mission team realized that one of Lucy's two solar arrays had not properly unfurled and latched. A series of activities in 2022 succeeded in further deploying the array, placing it in a tension but unlatched state. After a deployment attempt on December 13 that produced only slight movement in the solar array, NASA decided to suspend further deployment attempts. According to the agency, the solar array, which is 98% deployed, is producing the expected level of power at the present solar range and is strong enough to withstand the stresses of Lucy's 12-year mission. However, NASA hasn't completely ruled out making another attempt to lock the array. Lucy's team will have another chance to troubleshoot the solar arrays when the spacecraft returns for its second Earth flyby in December 2024. Please check out my previous video to learn about the Lucy spacecraft and its journey to the Trojan asteroids. Link in the description. Thank you for joining me for this week's science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.